I truly believe plants are a lot. You, yes, is there a risk with some of these animals? Maybe f- f- hunting wise, e- potentially for, for for some of them. Um, but the, what's the most dangerous to me is plants. And with that, I would say, um, in the what's most dangerous is. You know, I, I did a foraging tour for a school uh, last fall, and uh, it was beautiful. We go out into the woods. The school was located right on the edge of the river, and it was a beautiful campus. There's trees everywhere, and we're walking through the woods. We're doing this a couple-hour foraging tour. It was great. We're identifying all these plants. We're sampling some and doing all this stuff. And we come across this um, this one mushroom, a jack-o'-lantern mushroom, which is incredibly poisonous. And uh, one of the uh, girls in the class, she goes, would you say that poison? Oh my God! Would, would you say that's like the most dangerous plant is a, is a mushroom? And I said absolutely not. She said, you just said that would kill you. I said, oh. I said if I ate that plant, if I ate that mushroom, and you saw me die, that is an incredibly safe mushroom for everybody else in this group because nobody else would ever eat it. Like you'd mm. never eat it. I said, you want to talk about a dangerous plant? A dangerous plant is spinach. Like a dangerous plant is something where you don't see an immediate effect and you eat ma- mm. massive quantities of it. And weeks and months and years later, you start to feel the effects of this accumulation of things like oxalates. And all of a sudden, then you're like, oh, my God, you know, what's causing this problem? And somebody's like, oh, it might be the spinach. And you'd be like, no, it's not the spinach. I've been eating spinach for 10 years. Like, well, exactly. That's the problem. So now, especially in the past where you have plants that – where you, don't, you, you don't have the ways that we can identify, you know, blood tests and other things that are going on. In, in the past, when we have, we're including plants in our diet that we've detoxified to the point where we have this image that they're safe. But 10 years down the road, they're causing some sort of harm and we can't connect that plant consumption of it for 10 years and, you know, whatever effects. That, that to me is the most dangerous. Mm. How do you feel about Dr. Chafee's perspective on like instead of detoxifying, just cut them out in general? Do you agree with that at all? I, I think he's 100 percent spot on. I, I, if you if the focus is and I've had con- I, I was talking to him about uh, somebody he was working with in Canada. That was almost entirely meat based and I, I forget the exact conversation, but she was still using some herbs in her cooking like flavor level, right? Like very minute amount. And uh, I forget what she, symptoms she still had. And he finally said, look, just, just take them out. Just try it. Just take it all out. And he said, according to him, once she took them out, whatever the last little ill effects were, were completely gone. Mm. Um, he's right. It, it, I, I do believe if you want a toxin-free diet, you can guarantee that with carnivore. Mm. However, um, if, if that's your goal, uh, I do – find value. And I know we had this conversation a little earlier. I do, I do find, I, I love Brussels sprouts. I, I love, I love f- Brussels sprouts fried in lard at, with bacon. One of my favorite things on the planet. I love it. And when it's cooked properly and it's crispy, I mean, I enjoy the flavor. I enjoy the texture. I enjoy all of it. So um, we include plants in our diet. There, there are things about, you know, the thing that I think we need to focus on is you know, and our kind of eat like a human approach is recognize, you know, eating an ancestrally appropriate diet, but recognizing we're living in modern times and finding that balance is the key because there's a piece that the nutritional piece of it, whether it's bioavailability or macronutrients or micronutrients or safety in our food or all of those things are incredibly important from a biological level. But Food has permeated every single part of our life. It's part of our tradition. It's part of our religion. It's part of our politics. It's everything that we can't nourish ourselves fully as humans if we're solely focused on just the biological aspects of it. Mm. So I'll eat my fried Brussels sprouts. Mm. But, we, but, but I do believe he's right. Mm. Not necessary, but for enjoyment, cultural things, aspects, like you can incorporate those things, but not necessary. I don't think they're necessary from a nutritional level if you're eating the entire animal. If you're eating the entire animal and that animal has been raised properly and fed the right diet, I don't know. You do not need vegetables from a from a uh, nutritional perspective. Mm. But from that, but but very few of us are eating the entire animal as much as we should be, and very few of us are getting animals that have the maximum amount of nutrient density because of how they may have been raised, right? Um, so for that 
there's other things we need to think about for sure. Even even uh, certainly, and I'm and I used to not be a fan of supplementation, but I know that the food we have today is not the food we had 